How do you want to do this? You want to just wing it? Yeah, we can just wing it. All right, let's just wing it. Are we filming now? Yeah, we've been okay, filming for a little me, bit. Okay, let me give myself a little setup. Yeah, look, 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 look good. All right. Look good. Put my... Put your face up. Movie face. Wow. Up. Okay. <laughs> So I'm here with uh, the world famous coin guy. I am spectacular, the silver stacular. And we're gonna talk about what today, guys? Whatever comes up. I picked up some, some new acquisitions in the last month or so. Some pretty tight coins. Um, interesting coins. Beautiful coins. So very recently you got these. Mm-hmm. 20 cent pieces you normally see at the 75S. You don't usually see a 75 or a 76P. Um, well, can I say something that you don't even normally see 20 cent pieces? They're kind of hard to find by themselves. And the reason they got rid of them is the reason you have problems with the Susie B. Anthony's. You think they would have learned. That's why I'm saying you need somebody at the, at the Bureau of Engraving and the Mint who knows something about coin history. They got rid of these because they used to com confuse them with quarters, with seated quarters. I mean, here's the seed of quarter. Because they were too similar. Yep. And in those days, a nickel was a pitcher of beer. I mean, like, they are very similar, aren't they? Yeah. Somebody would shoot you for that. For a beer. Yeah. That's See, crazy. when you grade, when you grade 20 cent pieces, they were struck a lot higher. So normally what would pass is, let's say, a VG in a seated, in a 20 cent piece would be a fine. You have one extra grade. Their grading is one grade higher. Just that's, cause you'll have beautiful backs, a lot of detail, feathers, everything. And the coin will be a VG and it looks like an extra fine or a VF. So you always give it that extra grade in 20 cent pieces. I've actually got a couple of proof type coins. This is a proof type coin, proof type coin, barber proof. Again, a, a yeah, coin that you don't normally see. 670 of these, 1,000 were made, 975 made. That's wild, huh? The condition of these right here yeah. for such an old coin. I sold the uh, seated half uh, about a week ago. Pretty seated half. I think it was a five. I, I got. If I don't sell these in the next week or so, I'm probably going to send them in to be graded. They look good graded. Even the bus dollars I got there. These are the first bus dollars I've gotten over the counter in in all the years I'm in this store. Probably in the last seven years. When I was next door, I think I picked up a couple. Talk about rarity. Yeah, pretty stuff. It would be good to have these graded, don't you think? Yeah, and that'll be the next step. This one's not a proof, right? This is just, no, that's just, just a beautiful uh, coin, yeah, man. I love these. Yeah, a pretty these. coin. And it's net because it's been cleaned. Still, but I'm selling awesome. it at half the going price. So much history right here in my hand, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of the allure of the, uh, what the coin Another coin Another coin that didn't live last long, three cent nickels. They had three cent silver pieces, three cent nickels. What was the deal with the, you know, them not Shortage lasting of long. change. Yeah. It was a shortage of change right after the Civil War. And they, uh, they had to make, they had to produce stuff to buy stamps and things like that. You had to give them like six half pennies to get a stamp. So they made this, and then they made a silver piece. And a silver piece was very thin. I heard somebody telling me that I, my grandmother used to tell me they used to the, the baby used to teeth on three cent silver piece. <laughs> I think the kid would swallow that. Oh yeah. How many kids did you lose? Oh, I mean, my goodness. These are these are hard to find right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They, I read somewhere, maybe it's in the Overton book, not the Overton halves, but in one of the books on dollars, they don't think that there's 30,000 bus dollars that survived. And of those, half of them are 1799s. All the bus dollars made, less than 30,000 exist. That's wild. So this right here says that it was repaired, and that's probably what, right up here by the R? Right at the top. Yeah, right there. You can see where the E or right there. The R that and Liberty has been... A jeweler would repair that. A lot Nathan of people, does good work. I mean, no. you could do that. A lot of people would back off from a coin like that, but such a old and rare coin, 
I mean, you never see these. I talked to you about these before that I've gone to many coin shows and- I remember 50 years ago- You don't find going them. Going into Rubenstein's 48 years ago when I was in my teens. And you could see, you could buy a bus dollar back then for $125. And they would have a hold one would be like, I remember buying hold ones at shows for 45 bucks wow. in the seventies, a hold one. Yeah. Now, I don't think you can buy a hold one now, especially one that's in high detail. Like this one's a pretty high detail, but I don't think you can buy a hold one for $300 anymore. No, they, I mean, it almost like with certain coins, it doesn't matter as much. I mean, they, people just need that coin. This is a really pretty one. I kind of want to get this one from you. I got somebody else who wants that too, but he wants to go to the fun. I heard fun has only got 200 dealers. Everybody's scared, you know? Well, I, I understand that. I can understand that. I know I got my shots and, and I got the, the frozen, uh, the frozen things and, uh, and the, uh, all the medicine and everything. But I, uh, I don't know. Well, if I'm in the crowd, I get a little antsy. I don't know. It's, you know, two years ago, you looked in Japan or China, they walked around with masks. Didn't help them, I guess. But then again, they tell you only one person died there in the last year. I don't, I don't know. That's if you believe the Chinese. But, uh, I'm a little apprehensive, but I'm not wearing a mask. And I let people, as when they come in, if you want it or not. The wife yelled at me yesterday. You can still get bronchitis. I said, okay. Okay. My nurse told me that I have to wear the mask when people are around that I don't know. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> Stranger it's danger. It's, well, I can't afford it. They told me if I get pneumonia again, I'm going to die. So, you know, I, I, better, I better be on the side of caution. Um, we don't need that stuff in our lives. We need no. you, man. No, I don't want to be going. I'm not ready to leave yet. I got too much to say about things. Yeah. I'm going to join that Republican club that meets the second Tuesday. Steve Champion's going to be there and some others. And yeah, we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. I talked to him. He called me the other day. He's one of the dealers around here. And he sits on the Brooksville board. And we're going to talk about a few things. I said, I can participate? Oh, certainly. I said, okay. <laughs> now you've unleashed the tiger. Oh, boy. Uncoin related, apparently, huh? Uncoin related, <laughs> but related to America. I love these. Yeah, I like all these. Like I said, there was a time I wouldn't sell these. What is but this circumstances. One? That's palladium. Oh, okay, palladium. It says the first palladium coin ever made, Tonga. Tonga. Who knew? Who knew? Maybe back then, palladium was $6 an ounce. Well, it's so cheap right now, right? What is <laughs> what is palladium right palladium now? Palladium swings incredibly. It'll move two hundred dollars, eighty dollars in a day. I was just checking the numbers. Rhodium went up fifty nine hundred dollars today. Yeah, it's like Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, well, whew. this is about twenty seven hundred. But you, it's hard, you know. You got to see what you can get for it. I'm thinking of sending that in to be certified. Only because they only made five hundred and thirteen of them. That's it. They only made five hundred and thirteen. So how many exist? Yeah, Did a right. hundred make it for the last, you know, fifty-four years? How many made it? That's amazing. You know who collects Tonga? I had a person offer me a couple of U.S. rhodium coins, and I gave her a price. But then the price of rhodium dropped. I mean, they're not easy to sell, really. It's a bullion-related thing, and they have mintages of fifteen and twenty thousand. This one is a mintage of, of uh, as I said, five hundred, five hundred and thirteen. I doubt if there's a hundred left. That's wild. Palladium. Yep. I only ever had one palladium coin, and I just I flipped it so you fast. You know what the funny thing is about palladium? I remember buying palladium for somebody about a dozen years ago. She wanted palladium. I paid three hundred and fifty an ounce for it, and I sold it for four hundred. Look at it now. I mean, in those ten years, it's gone up eight hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, and I remember talking to a dealer who bought a bunch for somebody when it was like $85. I mean, it's it's volatile. It's like the Bitcoin thing. That's taking a shellacking. No. I, oh, yeah. Losing $30,000 in a couple of like weeks there? That's not bad, I right? Was reading <laughs> in the, I was reading in the journal the other day, first about manganese. Now, manganese is used in making the golden dollars, the Susie B's. They're made of manganese. Right. Okay. It's an element. But manganese, China controls 90% of the production and the, the being able to turn it into things in the manganese. Manganese is used in hardening steel. 
I didn't know that. I didn't either. They control 90% of world production and, and, and that. And um, once again, they know where to be at the right time, and they're going to control the output of magnet. Does that mean we can't get gold in dollars? Well, I don't know if that's going to stop the presses. But uh, And what's the story about silver? I keep reading in the paper, oh, the new dollar's coming out here, the new silver eagle's coming out. They said the middle of the month, middle of the year. Well, this is this June 1st is next week. I don't know if they can get the silver blanks. Where's it at? I got a feeling they don't have enough uh, planchets. Well, I have some of the eagles on pre-order, so I'm hope I'm, my fingers yeah. are crossed that they're going to send them to me. Yeah, when's the delivery day? Uh, I thought it was middle of June, I thought. Wasn't it like June 12th? Maybe it was July. I don't know. I think it was June 12th. The new eagles. I thought so. Well, how come you got to pay for the new centennial dollars and you weren't going to get them until October? I know. I, I felt for that This makes one too. me wonder, you know, where, where is this guy? I had two people in here who were really upset. They sat and sat and put it on and bang, they couldn't even get in. No. They, they were sitting there for an hour and they got on, to, it was all gone. I want to know if certain people who would, certain, certain coin houses have 500 for sale. And a thousand for sale. I think it's all crooked. I really do. I'm sure. I, I've heard that there's some, you know, deals that uh, those let's call them coin houses kind of get that they don't have to fight like we do for these coins. So they do get a certain. I've heard these things. I don't know. U.S. Mint doesn't contact me and tell yeah, me if these rumors are true. Somebody has a hundred employees. They all get a number. Sure. And they all get the ten limit. And before you know it, somebody got a thousand coins. So you didn't go on. Uh, battling I forgot. For those. You forgot about it. I blame the Wuhan pandemic for it. I, I was I asleep. Things. I was asleep for it. I was uh, luckily, late, but I forgot about it. My wife's awesome. She uh, she went to battle for me, and she was frustrated. She doesn't even collect coins, but she was like, "I couldn't get the CCs. I only got the O's for you." She got one. That's pretty she, good. Yeah, she got it. And I was like, I was like, man, I really wanted those CCs though. <laughs> I think the CCs are cool, and I'll tell you something that I've seen the trend in the last. I'll say it's the last year. Peace dollars. See what I got there? I got what six peace dollars. I cannot keep peace dollars in the trays down on the bottom. Oh, over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't get my 21s. There was a time when I'd have 12 or 14 21s. I had two calls for 21s on Monday. I cannot get 21 peace dollars. I think with the advent of the 100th anniversary and new peace, the one I want is the peace dollar one. You do? I'm going to try and get 10 of those. I think if any of them, that's going to keep a premium because there's only one variety, one type. And I think that that has, you know, potential. I'm not a modern collector or I don't go, I don't buy directly from the mint. I usually get everything secondary. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. And, um, you know, that's just what, that's what I do. But I, I'm wondering about the silver. It's what they tell you and what they, what you perceive. And then what really happens are two different things. I think they're snookering us a little bit on that. Uh, I'm hearing that there's problems in, in the silver refining in different parts of the world, COVID outbreaks, and they had to shut down mines. So I hear a lot of stories like that. Um, the other thing I was reading in today's journal was about the uh, the crypto where the Chinese are gonna crush it. It's basically what they told you. They don't want to have a cryptocurrency because they're coming out with a crypto one. They want, I can understand it. I think it's the way of the future. I think you're gonna see a crypto but I want to see federal, I want to see Swiss, American cryptocurrency. If you're going to have it, not like I said before, you know, I've seen pundits who are a lot smarter than me and know finance and know the markets, and they say the same thing. This thing's, they think it's a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Yeah, what, what backs this? You know, it's the wink and a nod, 21 million, 20 million, 500,000. Who counted them? I remember two and a half years ago when my son was saying, buy some crypto, it's going to 20,000. And it went to 20,000 within the week. But then somebody broke into some bank and stole 80 million. So everybody's looking at each other. Who's 80 million did they steal? It's not going to be the fat cat billionaires made 80 million. Some little guy lost his. <laughs> how, do you, how do you keep track of this? Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's, I know. it's, it's when you're me. talking about things like Enigma, and I've said this before. And my son mentioned it to me, too. I think there should be two different prices. I may have mentioned this before. I think there should be a price for physical gold and silver and a price for the ETFs. Because they're two different things in a way. 
I mean, you don't really own physical gold when you buy a thousand ounce contract and you can sell the same contract 10 times. And if, 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 you know, if it ever hits the fan and you want to get your bullion, what do you do? They're going to say, sorry, we only have to give, from what I've read in it, the death of money tells you the story about that, that if you ever really need it, all they have to give you is the paper. And they might be giving you, they might be giving you this paper. Or this paper. Meanwhile, you want the physical stuff. The old Zimbabwe notes, huh? Yep. $50 trillion. <laughs> I mean, you still got people coming in hot and heavy and scared. Um, it just, you know, you get a new person. It was a time when every every two months I'd get a, a new customer who come in and was worried. But this year, I'm getting one, I get one or two a week who'd never bought gold and silver before. And you just can't keep it. I don't, I'm, as I said, I'm not a bullion dealer. I get bullion, I sell it as it comes in. Uh, I'm a rare coin dealer. And, uh, and I get, and I do both. But if I started the week with 50, 100 ounces of gold and 1,000 eagles, I can get rid of them in a week. That fast. I mean, there's, there's a lot of fear. And I'm getting, and almost the fear is palatable. You know, you're, you're getting scared with them in a way. And it's like, I've seen what's happened. I'm fearful for this. You see this, you see that. I mean, I don't know how all of us little people see it. And those who pretend to know everything don't see what's happening. And there's a lot of fear. Uh, you know, you're scared for the US dollar. You're scared for it in the world. They were talking about how China, I was watching on Maria Bakaroma, they were talking about China and Russia buying up all the, they've increased their buying of physical gold. What's that about? They've been doing that for, for a decade. I guess they know something we don't know. Hmm. But then again, they look out for their country first. I forgot about that. Isn't that what countries are supposed to do? Look out for themselves first? Well, that's what, you know, that's why they're a country. And, it's, <laughs> and that's why those countries have been around 5,000 years. Yeah. They have a revolution every now and then, but they've been there a long time. Yes, they're ancient. You know, it's just that kind of a thing. Right. Um, so you don't have much in the way of uh, bullion right now, but I you have do have none. some cool coins. I have this. That's a bullion coin. I bought this the other day. This is the one everything was going crazy about. Oh yeah, show us that. All right, so what do you got here? This is the 19S reverse enhanced reverse proof. The one that the world went crazy over about a year and a half ago around Thanksgiving. Yes. I bought and sold three of them and made money. Bought the last one, paid 1100 sold it for nine. That's Yikes. not good business. No. So I'm paying a little less. I still think that coin has a potential. I mean, the 95W proof has the same mintage within a couple of hundred, and that coin is $2,000 in that grade. I mean, that's just where they're settling right now. I don't know what the story is, but I have one. Um, it's a stunningly beautiful coin. It's a very pretty coin, low I, mintage. I got rid of mine, and I, I know it's a low mintage. This particular, you know, the 19 or 2019S is low mintage, but the Pride of Two Nations, when it came out with a Canadian coin, I'm happy with that one too. It's, you know, it's the same I bought look. one in a collection uh, yesterday sold it within the hour somebody came in and bought it they're pretty that's a it's a stunning stunning coin right there yeah pretty coin yeah so the kids uh, the kids bought this when I wasn't here they called me I was in Charleston that's a pretty city the wife wants to go on vacations while I'm still around I guess she's trying to tell me and uh, Charleston was a really pretty city very very friendly to tourism free buses all around and if you got a handicap sticker, you park your car, you don't got to pay for it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They got a, they got museums there. Uh, they had Fort Sumter, went over there where the Civil War started. Um, carriage rides. Um, it was it was a very pretty, very food oriented where we were. You know, there was a cotton club next door to us, and we're looking in the window like Oliver, like Oliver Twist. You know, you're looking in the window, and it's like lamb chops are fifty two dollars. But the potatoes, $9. The green beans are 11 Everything is a la carte. Mm. I mean, everything, like a glass of water probably cost you $5. But it would cost you, we, we're not drinkers, so we don't drink liquor. But, you know, an appetizer, it's $150 a couple. Sure. And uh, you're looking through the windows and the people, some are eating out front to a lot of high-end restaurants like that. And most places were 100 to 200 a couple to eat. Uh, you know, the South lost the Civil War, but I think they buried the gold. <laughs> because I'm looking at all these fancy ladies and gentlemen, 
and they're in white linen and dressed to the max and hats and and this is you know five o'clock on a Thursday after Thursday evening or afternoon and it was they were well dressed it was it was it was nice it was right by the hotel we were staying at it sounds like a nice place it was I'd never been there before and and you know I took the ride we stopped by my son's on the way back down to St Augustine over at the Vault and Company and we spent a few hours there had dinner and then headed back home got home late that night but it was uh, good and the kids did good here they were they were selling things they picked that up they picked up a couple of pieces of gold which I promptly got rid of on Monday and um, in and out that's what it still is there's a lot of fear a lot of buying people buying gold oh. like crazy hard to keep that stuff in you can't keep it in there's people who I just don't have any more you know you got you got, I, get a, I got a phone call from somebody who's looking for a bunch and he wants a substantial amount. And I said, I don't, first of all, I don't deal in numbers like that. And it's just, you know, out of my league to buy 40 ounces of gold for me. I just don't do that. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, I've sold 10 ounces, but uh, not 40 ounces. It's a little much. Uh, what else we got here? It can be dangerous, too, especially with, like, uh, the way things are going with the ups and downs. I mean, you're talking about, and with you and your margins, I mean. Yeah. Whew. That's the whole thing. When you're looking at the margins, you got to leave yourself room. And I can't, you know, it's like I tell people when I buy something. It's not that I'm paying you, if gold, let's say gold is $2,000, and I'm paying you full spot, well, you're going to get 2100 to 2125 or I pay you 2020. The this isn't the 2000 I spent. It's you're handling the money twice. You're handling $4,000. I can't make 100 bucks if I'm doing $4,000 deal. Between buying and selling the coin, you're handling $4,000, give or take nowadays. Yeah. And I'm not doing it for $25. Because <laughs> the price of gold can can drop. Palladium can move 70 80 dollars in a day. Yeah. You know, and uh, and something like that. Gold can move thirty dollars in a day very easily. Uh, it's just too it's just too volatile. What's you got in here? What's some other cool stuff in here? I had the China pattern coin okay. in nineteen twenty one. Somebody came in and bought that the other day. Pattern coin. Yeah, it was a pattern coin nineteen twenty one. Uh, ten one. I'm not sure, but it, you know when you look at patterns, seven to ten usually are made. So, you know, this coin was an unk. It graced it, it was in the cal it was in catalog book. I got less than a thousand for it, but it was in the catalogs for twenty four hundred dollars. I mean I think that was a great buy. How do you still have this coin? I don't know. I've had a couple of phone calls, nobody wants to pull the trigger. I may have to drop the price down to a thousand. It's so cool. But it's not made of gold. It's not made of gold. Not You're made right. of gold. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> this one I have had a couple of people inquire about, and nobody has another one. Four hundred seventy-one made. What happened in the Philippines? You had the Japanese invasion back in forty-one, when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. They simultaneously invaded the Philippines. We're talking, you know, fire, bloodshed, and how many of those actually survived through that and everything else? They only made four hundred seventy of them in nineteen o five. Now, Another coin. I don't think there's a hundred. When you had all those foreign coins, you said you couldn't keep the Philippine stuff in no. at the time. It's the only Philippine I think I have right now. Yeah. All and that's from that gone. original group. And I've had inquiries and nobody is pulling the trigger. One gentleman wants it for his wife. She's from the Philippines and he, you know, I, I want a reasonable price for it. I mean, the last one we saw sold in an AU-58 for eleven fifty. This is a proof 61. You, I got room. Were you kind of amazed with that that foreign uh, yeah. hoard? Like, and, and uh, what sold and what didn't sell? Were you kind of amazed by that? I didn't realize that the stuff that sold the best was anything uh, outside of the Philippines, which sold very well. It was all the Spanish-speaking countries, the Mexican, the uh, Panamanian, the Cuban, uh, all the Spanish countries, and well, you got Chile in your hand. I mean, all those countries, any of the boxes related to those countries, right out the door. I mean, I sold a percentage of Canadian and German, and I still have some German and Canadian left, 
The one that really surprised me was the Canadian. Those Canadians don't want to buy their own currency. <laughs> I've got a bunch of that stuff left. But I sold quite a bit. I mean, 90% of it is gone. Uh, and we're still selling more from, you know, one week here, a coin there, a coin there, a crown here. Sold all the crowns. That went quickly. But there was a lot of curious stuff. And every now and then I'll get a phone call from somebody out of state who'll say, I want $350 worth of foreign. And I usually give them twice that much in a box so they're happy. And I'm just wheedling, I'm just, you know, I'm working it down. I'm having fun, they enjoy it, and they order again. And I mean, there were people who called and said, I want $2,000 worth of world coins. And they, they would say, these countries I don't want, but I'll take everything else. Just like that. Just like that. And I was surprised at the numbers, 2,000, 1,500, 1,200. Holy cow. And uh, it was, it was a madcap time and it was really heady. And uh, we had a lot of fun in it. Then I got sick. That slowed down the year. Yeah. But I got back here, so that's, that's all that really counts. You're back in action now. Back in, and like I tell you, work to me, and I've talked to other people, that, is, uh, that, that to me is therapy, keeps you working. I got a person who comes in, he's a client. But he still sells coins on the side. He's 95, 95 years old. And he's buying peace dollars for clients. That's cool. Um, I mean, just you know, it's like I tell the wife, how many uh, how many episodes of Castle can I watch? <laughs> I'm a Game of Thrones kind of person, but um, you know, it's it's that kind of thing. You know, let's talk about real quick uh, something that I've always recommended, and I know you've recommended people that have written books have recommended these uh, constitutional silver, ninety percent junk silver, whatever somebody really wants to call it. That's kind of like, to me, you like that. <laughs> when they come in and they ask me what to buy, I said in the ratio of actual silver value to what you're getting in hand and what you have to pay, I said junk silver is your, is your closest. Yeah. I mean, I'm selling like dimes and quarters at 22 times face. I buy it for 20, I sell it for 22. That's the spread. I get 10%. But you've noticed, a bit of a, you've noticed a bit of a decline in people it's, buying that. It's slowed down. They still want eagles. Um, <coughs> I had a bunch of 999, I moved that. Um, but as I said, with Constitution, a lot of people discover they want to get it. The next event, and I'm afraid there's going to be a real event in the world. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about gunfire, blood in the streets. And I'm not talking Chicago. I'm talking about, you know, countries getting into it. I, I'm just afraid it's going to happen. And, and then you're going to see another surge. But what the thing is about 999, when somebody comes in, they want 500 phase. They want 300 phase. One or two sales like that, and I got no more 999. And that's okay. That's more, you know, like a member of dealer once saying, there's always more. I mean, more always comes in. Another collection shows up. Um, you know, and that's just what happens. You buy, you sell, and you, and you move it. And, and for me, I have, I got all this stuff I got to go through yet. I mean, I got all kinds of odds and ends and all kinds of wacky well, stuff. imagine the stuff that you have in here that you just forgot that you even had. And know, what's it's that dime doing somewhere. in there? <laughs> it's like, what's this? Magna Carta? No. Uh, what, what is this piece right here? The one that has like a little, little pen set on it. This, I think somebody worked something. This looks like um, Australian. See, look at that stuff that, stuff he didn't know about. Somebody made a button out of this. No. Medically unfit. Oh, you should have this. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> it says boy. medically unfit, and it's, uh, it looks like it's Australian. Volunteered for active service, issued by Department of Defense, medically unfit. This way somebody didn't beat up the 30-year-old guy walking in the street. How come you're not serving? It's got a serial number and all in the back, too. Wow. And you see the way this is made? Yeah. I'll bet you this is World War One. What's the other side? With the med medically underfoot? Yeah. That's was, the symbol you see on the silver coin. I was, I was staring at the your ring things. again, guy. Oh. I love that ring. This is stuff I gotta catch up on. Now I'm staring at my thumb. I've been pouring my own silver, man. I can't I can't stop hitting my thumb. You know what I mean? As I'm as I'm uh That has to burn. It, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. They say that once you do it once, like you learn, but Look, I'm a slow it. learner. I got another one really, of these. That's really cool right there. There was one in the collection I bought, the big collection, and I actually picked up another one. That's cool. 
That's politically, that's uh, politically wrong there. You got the British lion standing on the neck of the German mm -hmm. uh, eagle. Obviously the end of World War II and that symbolized it. Yeah, taking them down. It's cool art though. I mean, you know, art. <laughs> yeah. So much with coins. What's some of this old gold you have right here? Can we see some of that? I'm sure by the time this video comes out, that stuff will already be gone. It goes little by little. People, see, it's like somebody, I had a young person call me uh, yesterday at home, and he called me again today, and he had a quarter real, Guatemala, 9, 1821, and he said that it was PCGS graded MS-65, and according to their website, it's worth $500. I don't really know exactly what we could have got together on, but... I looked it up in a book that was a couple of years old, but, you know, those things are really hard to sell. I mean, you're talking about a coin that has, you know, what does it got? Does it have $10 worth of gold in it? And nobody wants to spend hundreds of dollars on that. It's like when you look at something like, like this one. This is like the princess. I mean, this is a $1,200 coin. It's a type three. It's in a really high grade, but it's an unk, but it's been cleaned. So I'm cutting the price almost in half. But there isn't $100 worth of gold in that coin. Oh. Same with this. There isn't $100 worth of gold in them. They are so cool, though. They are. They're really pretty. They're very... I saw a bunch of gold came in today. I gave the person a price. He had a bracelet. Most of it is gone. But it was $5, two and a halves. It was $5 Indians and two and a half dollar Indians. And they were all soldered together. They had links to make it so you could be a bracelet. There were only three of them. But he said it used to be a full bracelet. And then his, his, his father, or his grandfather, got Alzheimer's. And he started breaking them off and using them to go to the store to buy stuff. That must have been interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a pack of cigarettes. Oh, it'll be $5. Here you go. Here's a gold piece for you. Thank you. <laughs> That's wild, huh? How come these, uh, this design just kind of ended right here? The Incuse uh, Indian design. I don't know. Died out in 29, and in the uh, in the 10, and well, it died in 29 with the fives. They were only on the two and a halves and the fives. It's a shame, huh? Uh, my favorite is the 10, the big war bonnet. The big one. Big heavy war bonnet. I think that's such a beautiful coin. Um, you know, in those days, they were classic. They made classic coins. They made pretty coins. Now you want to put people on them that, you know, unfortunately, they don't teach much his history. You give the action, you know, you give a kid a Kennedy half, he doesn't know who's on it. Charlie Sheen? Who is this? You know, they don't, they don't know for nothing. No. History isn't taught. And, uh, and you know, it's just a sad thing. And I, I like the old classic coins, right? The Mercury Dimes, Walking Liberty Halves. But like I said, the, there's been an explosion in the peace dollars. I can keep peace dollars in the case. I think I have a, I picked up a certified 28 the other day. Somebody came in looking for it. Key date, I have a P. And I forgot I had it. There it is. It's up front. Where at? Right here. Oh, yeah. You can take it out and everything, huh? Look at PCGS this. certified? That means it's all there. That's one of the top grading companies. The key date. Hard coin to find now. I mean, you actually have a call for them. There's a time you'd have 228. You might be sitting on them for six months. Now I get somebody every month looks for 28, and every week somebody's looking for 21. I had two people looking on Monday for 21s. Well, I don't got to look anymore. I actually finished that album. Thanks to you. You helped me out a lot good, with that. Good, good. Appreciate that. You get that a lot where people that come in and they're so thankful to have you around because you helped them finish an album? Well, that's what it's about. I mean, I understand those kind of people. You know, I've been collecting them my whole life, and, uh, and that's what you do. Like I said, collecting coins to me is a therapy. Uh, when I used to come home from a 12-hour shift working at the hospital, and you've had a long day and a hundred decisions to make, and you come in, you leave in the dark, you leave the house at 4.30, and you're getting home at 6 o'clock, and it's dark again up in New York, and you're tired, and the kids are yelling, or they're fighting, and you sit at your desk, and I sit at my desk, and I did my coins, and that used to, that used to wind me down, and that's what I used to do, it was therapy me for me then, and I sold quite a bit of... I used to sell coins to people I worked with. Um, you and, know, that's and since then, you, you no longer collect coins, right? You've stopped collecting coins. No, I collect coins my whole <laughs> life. I still put away coin every now and then. Yeah. 
I picked up a couple of interesting gold coins in the last month. Um, one is an early two and a half dollar gold piece, and the other one is a French. I think it's like 1835 French piece. They've both been cleaned, but I still want to get them certified because I think they're pretty cool coins. Yeah. And I don't mind it. Those will those sell themselves. Coins like this is easier for me to explain to somebody and sell than having Tara or my son trying to sell them years from now because I know the history of this. I mean, these coins, these do here, the, uh, the carved out 13S Type 2 and the one on the wrong plant should have been in my collection for years. And um, I can explain them and tell you what they are better than they could because I know the history better. Um, and that's what I do, you know, and they're still collectors. I'm happy to see young people coming in. I mean, I get young people in and, uh, you know, it, it's really good. Some of these young collectors, I mean, like real young kids, like, like under 12, they blow me away with their knowledge. I had, I had this kid who was in here the other day. When I say the other day, it was probably two weeks ago. And he just, he just amazed me with his knowledge of coins. And he was 11 years old and he talked really intelligent. He was an intelligent kid and he, uh, he just surprised me. And I'm glad to see that. Um, that might be the next coin guy. He, he could be. He told me he'd want to be doing what I'm doing years from now. I said, well, wait at least 10 more years. Give me a little more room in here. You know, <laughs> and, and who knows? At any time I'm ready to sell, I guess. But, you know, he's a little, he was a little too young still. But he knew his coins and he understood coin. And the way he spoke was intelligent. Like, you know, some kids don't know what they're talking about. But I like the little ones that come up to 10, 12 year olds. When I used to do the Great American Teaching, I don't know when that'll start again, but you know, and have outside people come in, I doubt if you're even going to do that later this year. But I did that for six years, and that was fun. Right on. Uh, that was really good. Yeah. Uh, I, see, I was the kid that didn't know what he was talking about. That you know was a dumb kid. You know, <laughs> now later I want to get into the coin collecting. It's hard hard to you know learn as much when you got to work and you got other things going on. But yeah, I try little by little. I try to. Try to be a student well, too. Well, I was lucky in that I, when I was going, when I was collecting coins, I would go to Rubenstein's and Bayshore. Those who live on Long Island know where they are. They're all gone now. But I used to go to Rubenstein's and I learned a lot there. I was 17 the first time I stepped in that store. And I went there for, God, I guess the next uh, 40 years. Anytime, straight through for 30 years. And then we moved here. And anytime I was in town, I would go there. But I, I grew up in that store. And the 110 uh, coin show. I grew up there. I watched and I learned. And the setup of this is a Rubenstein setup with an extra case here for newer stuff or better stuff. And um, I learned a lot there. And I watched the way they graded and I pretty much just absorbed that. And grading has come a long way. You know, when I collected coins back in the day in the 70s, you had no, you didn't have as many multi grades of, let's say, fi very fine 20. 25, 30, 35. You just had very fine. It went really, it went from good to fine, then very fine. And then it would be, un there wasn't an AU, there was extra fine uncirculated. You know, it, it's amazing. Of the, and then when it was uncirculated, sometimes they would say blazer. There was no 10 grades of uncirculated or 10 grades of proof because you didn't have the third party graders. You didn't have any of that then either. Uh, that didn't come in until around 1985. And I remember the old timers telling me this will never last. We want to hold our coins. And, and there's some truth to that. But, well, they've gotten over 35 years for it. And I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to hang in there. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to hang in there. It's going to hang in there. Hey, uh, let's try this real quick. Uh, maybe not real quick. <laughs> Depends on how crazy we get with this. Your five coins. Give me five coins that you just wish that you had. No, you, can just, you can never seem to get these coins, but you wish you had them. I want number top of my list that I've been looking for since 1995. Number one. Is the, the uh, 1794 silver dollar. We've talked about that one. Yep, 1794 silver dollar. If somebody has one they don't like, if it's got a hole in it, just send it to me. I'll be very, I'll send you a signed dollar with my picture on it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can do this. Wow, this a, I can do. What a good deal. All right, so back to it. You get uh, some after hours company. Yeah, was telling me that you never get any company while you film it like nobody's ever here. I said, that's why the door is locked and it's after hours. That's why nobody's knocking on the door. <laughs> but this guy just kept knocking on the door, so I had to go talk to him. Yeah, your fans need you, man. Yeah, that's okay. That's good. That's <laughs> what I enjoy. All right, so a... number two coin. Can you give me that one? Uh, 1916 standing quarter. Ooh, yeah. 1916 standing quarter. That's on one of my lists. With the breast hanging out. Now, I had one of those. <laughs> Believe it or not, I cherry-picked one of those 25 years ago. 30 years. It was a long time ago. I bought it in a bunch of silver that was on a pile in a dealer's tray. I looked at it, and I'm thinking, I paid 62 cents for it. Took it home, checked the diagnostics. I was convinced. I showed it to Rubensteins. He said no. I sent it into Annex. They sent it back, gave me an AG3. Had no date. Wow. No date, but I got an AG3 on it. With no I date. I sold that to a dealer for $400. Jeez. They bought the plastic. It was a 16. Because the way the reverse was, you could tell that it was a 1916 by the certain. Well, it, it was a type one. It had to be a 16 or 17. But the, the way that tells you there's a, a bun, the, the woman standing has two buns. On the 16, there's only one bun. Uh, and it's the fold of the skirt at the bottom. There's a squareness to it or a loop. And the other one is the 16. Gotcha. When you combine all of that, see, it was a low grade. And on the 16, her drapery doesn't go over the wall where her arm is resting. But on a low grade, you can't, you don't have that option because it's worn off. But uh, I did it by diagnostics and I was right. That's, that's being a collector. Yeah. That's really taking the time to dig it out. But the 16's on my list. Um, Number three. This is tough. The 94s, like I have the 1794 halves. I've gotten most of them. Um, I don't think they really, I couldn't tell you there were five. I've either owned them or I have them now. Uh, but the, those two, especially the $94. I always wanted one of those. That's on my bucket list. What about, I'm going to throw some at you. What about like, like an original half dime? Hard to find. Sure. They never... You know, you're talking a, a bust half dime. I mean, I've seen those with with cracks on them and bent because they used to give them to kids to teeth on, I was told. I can't believe that. But, uh, nah, it was too small. I like bigger coins. I never collected pennies. I never really collected pennies. I collected Walking Liberty halves, and I collected bigger coins. Yeah. And, uh, and I got into the, the bust dollars back around in the late 90s. And foolish me, I tried to put that collection together from around 1980 to around 1995, and I spent thousands on it, and I just couldn't do it. I have three 1794 hats, but I don't have the, the 1794 dollar. Now in 95, the 94 dollar was five thousand dollars, which was a serious amount of money. But I went looking for it, and nowadays you can't buy a, a good. 60 grand, 50 grand. Wow. I mean, it just explodes. There's only about 150 of them out there. You know, it's just that kind of a coin. What about some of that old gold? Some of that stuff's wow. Crazy. I price. like the big old gold, the 1700s, but I don't drool over it. I like owning it. The only old gold I have, I have um, the last year of the facing right, the 1807 I have in an AU 53. I have an 1807 in a, in a three certified. That coin hasn't appreciated. I paid like 8,500 for that coin, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Bought it at a show and it never went anywhere. The 17, the same thing with the 1907 wire rim 20. I bought one of those about seven years ago at the, um, at the show, what was it? The uh, Tampa show. No, Clearwater Show. Clearwater Show, when it was held over in the country club. Uh, I bought it off a dealer there for trade with money and coins. That's another coin. I'm barely breaking even. It was over $12,000. But I got one. I always wanted one. I remember talking to a pharmacist when I worked at A&S, and I'm talking 50 years ago. Maybe this was 45 years ago I was talking to him. His name was, I think his name was Sid. And, what, and he was a coin collector. 
and I was talking about coins. I said, what coin did, should I buy at this age? And he told me, buy the 1907 wire rim, $20 gold piece. Yeah. And buy it in an unk. It's not a big deal. I have an AU58 that I believe is every bit of an unk. Uh, the difference between an AU58 and an unk is about $500. In those coins, it's not a big deal. But, you know, back then that coin was probably $500 45 years ago. Uh, but that coin is appreciated well. But not when I bought it. Um, that's about it. There isn't a whole lot. I've got. I've owned many of them, uh, or I still have them. I sold a few recently because of circumstances. Uh, but I still have a lot of bus dollars. I have a lot of bus halves that I've accumulated. I, I look at the codes on the back, and you'll look at the back of a coin. It'll say Rubenstein nine. Uh, it'll say like nine ninety three. I bought that in September of ninety three, or September of eighty five. I mean, I see codes like that on backs of coins. Crazy. Uh, but I've been collecting my whole life. Some people smoked and gambled and, um, you know, and did the while. I married young and my hobby and my vice are the same thing. And I enjoy it. it like I said, it keeps me calm. It keep, and you learn a lot. You read a lot. You're always learning something new. And I think that that's very important. That's so cool. Well, I appreciate uh, you being around and, and helping us get some knowledge from you. And uh, how has how this uh, YouTube thing been? Has it been pretty good uh, lately for people coming in, talking about YouTube I and get what tremendous, you do? I thank you, and I get a tremendous uh, outcry from it. A lot of thank yous, a lot of orders through it. I get to talk to people. I talk to young people, old people. I get people, now that we're opening up some, and Florida has always basically been open, but people are driving down, and they come in to see me. I mean, I, that's every week somebody comes in looking for me. And, uh, and that's a cool thing. That really is cool. Uh, you know, I understand what those people go through on the red carpet now. I see it more up yeah. front. <laughs> but What's the weirdest place you've been that somebody recognizes you? I was at the fun show with my daughter uh, this last winter. No, not this winter. The winter before. When COVID, just before COVID started. Okay. So we're talking January of 2000. January of 2020. 2020, January, the fun show in Orlando. Yeah. I was there with my daughter and my granddaughter. And somebody was behind the counter for a big company out of California, I think it was, or Pittsburgh. They had like four dealers back there, and we were talking, and the guy had an owl coin, which I want to thank that person who sent me an owl coin. And uh, my daughter said, do you want that? I said, someone will come into the store. And then the guy goes, your store? And then my wife, my daughter said to the guy, well, this is coin guy. He looked at me, and he was a young guy, early 20s. You're the real coin guy, aren't you? And he carried on. And he goes, I got to get your picture. The guys are not going to believe this. And he goes to get his camera, and I grabbed my granddaughter, and he took our picture together. That That's was cool. pretty cool. That was cool. You know. But it, uh, It's weird when, like, you go to a, a coin show or something like that. And, like, for me, I'm just a guy that talks. You know, you never see my face, really. And uh, you pe people look like looking at me, and they're like, they recognize a yeah. voice. They're like, I I know that voice, and it's like, man, really? Like I just thought I had a regular voice, but yeah, that's yeah, kind of wild, huh? Yeah. Well, the woman who was in here when you came in today, she recognized that voice. What's that voice? It's yeah, like, just she the voice. Who you were? And I think last time I was in here, a gentleman was in here, and same thing. He's like, I know that voice. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. Well, enough, if you watch enough of my, if you like my wife, and you watch my videos every month. All 20 of them or whatever they are, then you're going to hear that voice often. Not 20 of your wives, 20 <coughs> of the videos. 20 of the videos. <laughs> I misspoke. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, be careful. She actually comments on the videos, too. I've noticed that. She does. She yeah. answers a lot of my questions. She does. She tells me about the mean people who talk about me, but uh, that's okay. Listen, they talk about me, too. It's okay. That's okay. It's, it's the internet. Everybody's, you know, really talkative on it. They say whatever they really want to say. Sticks and stones. Sticks and stones. Up all night drinking, and they're like, I'm going to get on the I'm internet and start talking. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, you know, you get a lot, it's like I've told people before, there's a lot of types of errors and coins out there, and, and you get a lot of people who've been locked up for a year, and they're looking at their pennies, and they're looking at their quarters, and they call me, and they tell me, well, I've got this quarter, it's 1973, it's worth $3,800. And I'll say, no, it's not. And they try and explain to them, but somebody put one up on the internet. I said, they're on a fishing trip. It's just not that easy. Right. Well, the person that tells me he's got a, a 1969 S double dot. And there's like eight in the world at 100000 a piece or 80000 a piece. 
and he has four of them, four of them. Amazing. Said, You're a real lucky guy. <laughs> you know, it's just bring it in, I'll take a look, but don't give up your day job. Right. That's what I tell them. Right. But they're having fun, we're rocking and rolling. Um, another summer's upon us. And for you Canadians, come see me. You guys were locked out at the border this year, and I got a bunch of Canadian for you. Yeah, they're gonna come by, I guarantee it. Before we go, there's one coin in here I really like, and it's Canadian. Can I can I see this one before we go? This uh, it's a three ounce Canadian. I like this thing. I was talking to a Canadian buddy of mine about this coin. I was like, man, to me that's unique. Three ounces. Am I right? That's yep. Proof seventy, and it's a reverse proof. And it's huge. The holder is massive. I never understood why they had to use such a big holder. No. I mean, why couldn't you have a holder half that size? I mean, really, it needs to end right around here. You know, and it could be this big. You need one holder slightly bigger than, you know, why can't it just be slightly bigger than this? Canadians have a weapons ban, so this is the next best thing. Look at that. It almost fits <laughs> under. It really will fit in there. So it would fit in there. If you sure. had a half an inch on all sides, you'd put it in there. Yeah, it's cool. 2018. I thought it was cool. Yeah, yeah but you, know, you have all those Canadian foreign coins you, you never could sell because the Canadians didn't want them, I guess, right? I got a whole box of Canadian large pennies by dates. Tell me to get I've in here. I've got a couple of better ones out over there. I got some of the keys to the small ones. Uh, I've got quite a bit of Canadian uh, dollars, earlier dollars, quarters. I've got a whole box of Canadian. I'm, I started sorting out the pennies because there's so many. I'm anticipating somebody coming around and uh, buying some Canadian. Uh, but we'll hang in there. Tell them to get in here. Uh, when's the next coin show? Do we have one coming up? We have one. The Western Ender Coin Club has a show on uh, the 19th of June. It's going to be at the Veterans Hall on uh, off of Anderson Snow Road on the 19th of June. It's there from 9 to 3. It's a Saturday. Um, you could probably... Nate! Nate's the president. Nate's the president. Do you have it up on the web, the show? He's going to go look now to see if it's on the web. But it's next... Uh, it's in a couple of weeks, actually. I will be there if you come early. I have to be a little more cautious. Um, my daughter will be there, probably Nathan, or somebody else that I once trained many years ago is talking about maybe doing a show. So I might give him a little space at my table. Um, and you were just advised not to be around a lot of people yeah. because of the COVID. Yeah. I'll be there to set up, and I'll probably stay for the first half hour or so, and then I'll come and open up the store. Because we get a lot of people here, and I just have stepped back from a lot of shows. Uh, I want to do the fun show, but not do it as a table. Tar we're going to be we're going to be visiting my son up in St. Augustine that weekend of the fun, and we're probably just going to take a ride over to the fun from there because it's probably only about an hour away, give or take. And we'll, Nathan and I, or Tara and I, will just drive down. I got a couple of coins to show, <coughs> and um, we'll see what we can, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do. I have this coin. Seen his eyes light up. He's got this coin. It's gonna be a good one. This is the rarest gold eagle there is. In 1990. Oh, what man. makes it so rare is it's in a 70. Last one sold a month ago. You'll see prices all over the place on these. Um, you only have 31 in a 70. PCGS shows a population of 31. Only 31. They only made 40, 41,000 is all they ever made. So a raw one is worth about 1,200, 1,300. Um, I found a raw one, sent it in, it came back at 69, and I sold it. And I think it was nicer than this, but I, who am I to say? Right but, on. Uh, you know, but I don't see any problems with this. This is a legitimately nice coin, and it's a rare coin. I mean... It's going to cost you three and a half ounces of gold, but you get a quarter of an ounce of gold. <laughs> what a great deal. <laughs> they sell, but there's only 31 of them. It's a rarity kind of thing. Super rare. Super rare. Very cool. Thanks so, for that. Yep. You got anything else? You want to go ahead and uh, shut it down? That's about it. Um, that's about it. God bless America and hang in there. Hang in there. Better times are coming. Yes, sir. Thank you, guy.
拜拜。